Standing well back from human history, as you can do in a place like Australia on the edge of the world, it looks pretty simple. Basically, human societies, human beings started about half a million years ago. And for the first half million years, almost, there was very, very little technological growth. More or less a straight line with a slight uphill gradient from 5,000 years ago, but not much. That is in terms of the speed of transport and the amount of food you could grow and so on. There was very little development. And then a speeding up in the last 1,000 years, and then in the last 250 years, suddenly an exponential growth. And this is the Industrial Revolution. So not much until 250 years ago when everything has speeded up and you can travel much more quickly and you can grow much more. But that's oversimplified. In fact, what the pattern looks like is a series of rises and then stabilization. So for 100,000 years, for example, you get hunting and gathering, having grown, and then leveling off. And that's the history of Australia, 40, 50,000 years of hunting and gathering. Then for peculiar reasons, in certain other continents, Africa, South America, Eurasia, you get the development of tribal societies, a growth of domestication of animals and plants. And then almost all of those level off. And that's the history of the Americas, Africa. And then what looks like stability turns into change when about 10,000 years ago you begin to get the development of civilizations and more intensively they grow. And so you get ancient Chinese civilization and ancient Mesopotamian civilizations. But Rome and Greece begin to level off and China continues to grow, but then in about the 14th century levels off. So the equilibrium of technologies, social organizations, always seems to occur. Likewise, Islam goes on and then levels off. The extraordinary thing is that this having been the pattern, just about 300 years ago in Western civilization, you suddenly get this rapid growth. This is the scientific revolution and the industrial revolution. So there are a whole lot of puzzles. Why the stabilization of each continent and why a renewed growth and the sudden spurt at the end.